We've given a lot of importance to individual cells, and that's for good reason. Cells are the basic unit of life, and they are fascinating in their own right. As we've seen in other videos, there's whole universes in, inside of cells. There, there's a lot more complexity than uh, many of us might have guessed before really studying cells. But how do we go from cells to tissues? So when you know, if you look at your Even if you look at your skin, how do you go get that tissue of your skin or the, your tendons or if you think about the, you know, your, your heart's tissues or the different organs tissues, how do you go from a tissue which of course eventually will then get you to a full multicellular organism? So all the tissues and organs together, you're going to get the whole organism. How do the cells get together, coordinate, structure themselves to form me or you? And the answer is, In, or at least it involves something called the extracellular matrix. Extracellular, cellular matrix. And just as we talked about the insides of a cell, not just being a bunch of organelles floating around, that we have a cytoskeleton that gives the inside of a cell structure and allows it to even potentially move and divide and transport things. So if you assume that this, this blob right over here is a cell, What I just drew in yellow, that would be its cytoskeleton on the inside. But there's also an analogous thing on the outside that helps coordinate how, this, how the cells all relate to each other. And that's what we're talking about when we talk about the extracellular, the extracellular matrix. And it's made up of a bunch of different types of fibers and proteins and glycoproteins. And probably the most notable of these is collagen. So I'll do collagen in yellow right over here. So these could be collagen, strands of collagen right over here. And collagen is actually the most common protein in mammals. It makes up, it makes up approximately, so this is collagen in the yellow right over there. And it makes up approximately, I've seen estimates of 25 to 35%, but I'll just go it. It makes up approximately 30% of the proteins in mammals. 30% of mammalian, or I'll say mammal, mammal protein. So 30, roughly 30% of the protein in your body is collagen. And a lot of it is making up these strands that make up, that help make up, it's not the only protein found, that help make up the extracellular matrix. And you see these cells here, these, these things that I've drawn, they're kind of embedded in this. And they're, they're, the way I've drawn it, they can be fixed. They look like they're a little bit, you know, they're attached to this matrix and it helps position them. And it is true that the extracellular matrix, the collagen uh, fibers and other things that we find there help attach the cells and structure the cells into tissues, but they also help inform the cell, let the cell know when to grow, when to divide, even potentially when to die or when to produce different types of molecules. And to get a little bit deeper, to understand what's actually going on, how the cell actually attaches, if we were to zoom in, let's say we were to zoom in right over there on that square, so I'm, uh, I'm zooming in on the cellular membrane, we could get to this bigger picture that is, taking up, that is taking up most of the screen right over here. So view this as like a zoomed in rep representation. So right over here, this is inside the cell. Inside, this is inside the cell here, and we can see that we even have, we have, some, we have an actin microfilament right over here, and that helps form, this is part of the cytoskeleton. And then you have the collagen fibers, which is making up, which is making up part of the extracellular matrix. And then we see that we get, it, it all gets attached with these proteins. And these proteins, they're a class of proteins called integrins. Integrins. And they are embedded in the membranes of cells and through other fibers, say through something like a fibronectin, they can be attached to the broader The true to the broader extracellular matrix. And this is fascinating because it obviously structurally connects this extracellular, I guess you could say structure, this extracellular matrix to the inside of the cell, to the cytoskeleton, through these proteins. And as I mentioned, these proteins help kind of lodge things together or lock them in place, but they can also be used to signal. They can sense tension depending on what type of cells you have. They can signal for, for the cell itself to, to get active or, or deactivate in some interesting way. So it's a, it's a fascinating thing. And I want to make it very clear to you. A lot of times when you're studying biology, even an introductory biology class, you'll see things in, like this in textbooks. It's like, oh, of course, we have integrin proteins that are you know, going across our cellular membrane, and they're attached to things like fibronectin, and they're attached to the cytoskeleton. 
gelatin and the and 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 they they get attached to the you know the collagen fibers throughout the extracellular matrix and it seems like oh all of the biology is already figured out but the real answer is how all of these things actually work together and how they signal to each other and how cells know what to do based on how much stress or tension or how crowded a certain area is these are areas of open research in fact everything that i'm talking about if you were to delve a little bit deeper and I encourage you to do web searches on these. You'll find current research papers where people are saying, well, how exactly does an integrin know what to do? Or how does it exactly signal to the cell? Or how does it exactly form, uh, bind itself to the either the cytoskeleton or the extracellular matrix? These are all interesting areas of research. And people are going to be researching them for some time because there's always more questions of how these incredibly complex proteins and glycoproteins, glyco fibronectin is a glycoprotein. It's, it's proteins where the side chains have 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 uh, have 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 carbohydrate chains uh, branch saccharide chains branching off of them and so how do all of these things interact and how do they kind of quote unquote know what to do and how do all of these complex signaling mechanisms work so it's a fascinating area of research but hopefully this gives you an appreciation for even a further appreciation for the complexity uh, that makes you you we've already talked about cells themselves being complex but now they are lodged in this extracellular matrix which helps us better define tissues and help helps um, kind of let the cells live in this community and, and know how to relate to each other and know a little and have a little bit of signaling from their outside environment. And you know I've just drawn one one kind of integrin complex right over here, but you would have many along the cell and these aren't the these are along the membrane and these aren't the only proteins. The fascinating things about cellular membranes you'll often just see them drawn as this lipid bilayer, but they have all sorts of proteins that are lodged inside of them that are used as receptors that allow certain molecules in and certain molecules out. So they really are almost you know cities unto themselves and then they interact with their with their broader environment as well.